Hello and welcome to Learn Fast with HK. Today we are going to understand the payables turnover ratio using the real financial statements. Before we actually jump onto the financial statements, let's understand what are payables or what are payables, what is payables turnover ratio? Well, the payables turnover ratio measures the speed by which the company pays its suppliers. And the payables is the amount that is shown on the balance sheet that is yet to be paid to the suppliers of the company. Or you can say the amount uh, that the company owes to the suppliers of the company. The payables turnover ratios formula is very simple. It is total purchases divided by average payables. Now average payables is the beginning payables plus ending payables divided by two. So if you're talking about uh, the year 2019, uh, it's going to be the December 2019 payables figure. And we add the January 2019 payables figure and we add both of them and divide them by two. And there comes our average payables. The purchases of the year or the total purchases that the company has made are not directly given on the income statement or the balance sheet or any financial statements sometimes. However, there is a way that we can always calculate that. It can be calculated by taking beginning inventory. Uh, so you can take uh, the January 2019 inventory, add the cost of goods sold. So we add uh, all the goods that have been sold during 2019 year and subtract the ending inventory. And uh, the result will be the purchases that the company made throughout the year. So this is how we can purchase, we can find out the purchases for the year. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump onto the financial statements of uh, a company. So the company that I'm going to use today uh, for this calculation is uh, VF Corp. It's a listed company in the US. And uh, let me just uh, go ahead and open the company's uh, website and fetch its uh, financials. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and open the company's website. So let me just Google it. And uh, here we go. So this is the company website. Uh, we generally find the financial statements uh, either at top or at the bottom under investor relations section or under investors section. Uh, in this case, uh, it is directly given at the top and uh, under investors section, uh, we would need the financial information of, about the company and we are going to jump straight into it. And under financial uh, information, what we are looking for is uh, a 10 K statement, which is actually an annual statement that is uh, filed uh, with the SEC which is the regulator for the US stock markets. Uh, we are not looking for this annual statement. Uh, you can use this as well, but it's a fancy annual statement uh, that the company publishes uh, using uh, you know, various formats and colors. So the format is a little different and it's a little difficult to find things in this kind of uh, annual report. But over here, uh, if you use uh, this one, things will be pretty standardized and you'll be able to find what you're looking for very easily. So let me just open this in the PDF format. And uh, here we go. Uh, we have the financial statement of uh, the year uh, ending 2020. So it's uh, the financial statement of VF, VF Corp starting uh, 1st April 2019 and ending uh, March 2020. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, scroll further and uh, see what information I need. Uh, so I need uh, the financial statements and supplementary data. I'm uh, just going to click on this. Uh, okay, it doesn't take us to page number 48. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type page number 48 over here. And let's see. Okay, no, this is not something that we're looking for. So I'm just going to go further, uh, further down until I find what I'm looking for. But it so it, it should be it should be quite near. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so this is the balance sheet um, that we are looking for. 
So there are uh, two items that we are looking for. One is a balance sheet item and another is uh, an income statement item. And uh, let me just go back to see what we are looking for. So we're looking for total purchases and average payables. Total purchases is something that we might have to calculate. So uh, I'm just going to go, uh, go ahead and show you its calculation. But before that, we also need the average payables. So let's see uh, where are the average payables. Um, the average payables should be under uh, current liabilities. So here we go. Uh, we have account payables. And we are going to find out the average of this account payables by taking the average of uh, 2020 and March 2019. So let's just go ahead and write our uh, numbers and uh, start doing the calculation. Okay. So the payables turnover ratio is going to be purchases divided by average Payables. I'm going to calculate average payables somewhere here. Uh, the average payables are uh, equal to um, okay, so it's four zero seven zero two one. Plus Four eight nine six zero zero four eight nine six zero zero divided by two. So I'm just going to open the calculator. Um, let me just open the calculator. Okay, so it's four zero seven zero two one plus four eight nine six zero zero divided by two. It's four four five three one zero point five. So I'm just going to take uh, four four five three one one as the average payables. I'm uh, just going to write it here. So this is the denominator. Uh, it's four four five three one zero. And now let's calculate the purchases. So for the purchases, uh, let's revisit our formula. It can be calculated using uh, beginning inventory adding cogs and subtracting the ending inventory. So let's see uh, where we can find that information. So inventory is given in the balance sheet. Uh, it's quite straightforward. The beginning inventory is going to be 1173102. Let me just write this down. 1173102 plus uh, Cogs, so I'm going to leave cogs for a while. Uh, we don't know cogs yet. And at the end, we have to subtract the ending inventory, which is um, 1293912. One, uh, now let's talk about the um, cost of goods sold. Uh, this is something that we can find in the income statement. So let me just scroll down. So there we have the income statement and this is the cost of goods sold or uh, COGS. And we need to find out the COGS for the current year, uh, which is uh, year ending 2020. And that's going to be 4690520. So I'm going to write it here, 4690520. And now let's just uh, make this calculation and arrive at our payables turnover ratio. I'm going, going to open the calculator again. So it's uh, 1173102 plus 4690520 minus 1293912 uh, divided by 445310. It comes out to be 10.26. Uh, so this is our uh, payables turnover ratio if we talk about. Uh, now let's go ahead and see what it actually means. 
So in order to explain that to you, I'm going to reverse this ratio. Reverse the tables turnover ratio of uh, 10.26. So it's going to be 10 point, 1 by 10.26. And let me just find it out. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.097. I'm going to write it in percentage terms. So it's, it's 9.7%. Uh, so that's what it is. And let me just tell you what I have done here. Uh, this additional step, let me just explain to you. Uh, so I found the reverse of tables turnover ratio, or uh, you can say I have reversed the tables turnover ratio. So instead of purchases divided by average tables, I have found out average tables divided by purchases, or we can say, average tables as a percentage of purchases, which is 9.7%. So we can say that the average tables, uh, the average tables uh, is the amount uh, that is yet to be paid to the creditors. And uh, we can say in this case, we have paid almost 90% of the amount or uh, uh, so we can say 90% of the amount has already been paid to the creditors and we are left with 9.7% or 10% Yet, yet to be paid. And uh, this is what it is. So 10% of the amount is yet to be paid by this company. Now this doesn't uh, seem to be a very high figure because um, in every business you take some credit and uh, you pay some, some cash and uh, every business works on credit and there is some amount of credit that is there in all the kind of uh, organizations. So it is not surprising, but uh, I would not say that it is higher or lower uh, until and unless I compare this with the industry. So let's say for the industry, the reverse of uh, tables turnover ratio, or, uh, you know, if you find it out in percentage is 25% which means that the industry has already paid 75% of its creditors and is still left with 25% yet to be paid. While the company is left only with 10% and has already paid 90% of its creditors. Over here, uh, it seems that the company is making or pay, uh, paying its creditors faster. Now this seems to be quite a good thing because uh, if the company is paying its creditors faster, it's, it's reputation in the market is going to be much better. However, uh, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, if, if the creditors are giving us some period to make the payments, uh, it is okay to exhaust that period and make the payment uh, by that time only when the creditors ask you to, because if you do that ways, uh, you will preserve a lot of cash and you will not burn out your cash uh, very quickly. But if you make your payments very quickly, uh, even if the creditors are not asking you, the, asking the payments from you and you, you are just going ahead and making all the payments uh, before time, well before time, obviously it's going to uh, leave a very good impression on the creditors. But at the same time, uh, it will burn your cash. You will not uh, have that cash in hand that you could have had by not delaying the payment, but by, you know, just sticking to the schedule that the creditor has just given you. So even though it seems to be a good thing, but it is not that good for the financials of the company because the cash is going out quickly and cash is a very, very important component for the liquidity of the company. Now, at the same time, it is also not good to pay your creditors uh, slowly uh, because uh, if you are slower than the industry's level, in that case, uh, it is going to hurt your reputation 
and uh, that is also not good for the company because uh, it might have uh, credibility issues going forward when it is taking uh, or buying goods on credit from its suppliers. So all in all, uh, what I want to say is that uh, the company's uh, payables turnover ratio should be equal to that of industry and it should not face any problem uh, or any concerns after that. However, if it is lower or higher than that of industry, then it can have its own implications. And I've just explained you both the implications that it can have. Now, with, with VF Corp, uh, we have uh, the, the, the problem of uh, paying off the creditors too quickly or faster than that of industry's level. And that's the problem for VF Corp. Uh, and the main problem is that uh, it is burning its cash uh, faster than usual. Uh, now, a related ratio to this is um, days of payables, and uh, it, it is very much related to this, and uh, it gives all. It also gives the same picture. Now, let's see what that ratio says and uh, what that ratio shows to us with respect to VF Corp. So, the payables. Uh, the days of payables uh, is the inverse of payables turnover ratio multiplied by 365, which is the number of days in an year. And uh, it basically take it basically this ratio tells you the number of days that you take to pay off your creditors. Uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, expected that. Uh, the number of days that VF Corp is taking to pay off Chris is its creditors is quite low. So this ratio should come out to be a low number because the number of days that VF Corp is actually taking to pay off its creditors is, is very low because it's paying off its creditors very quickly. So let's see uh, what this number comes out to be. Let me just go back to my board and I'm going to write uh, days of tables uh, 365 divided by uh, I don't remember uh, what was the okay so inventory turnover ratio was 365 divided by thirty five point five. Sorry for putting another equal to sign or thirty five point six. And the answer for this uh, comes in days. So VF Corp is taking thirty five point six days uh, to pay off its. Um, creditors and uh, this seems to be quite a low number and let's say if the industry is doing that in 50 days then it again uh, tells us that VF Corp is making its payments faster than required or than the industry level and it will burn a lot of cash quickly for VF Corp. Now, this, this is what uh, these, these two ratios uh, actually mean. And um, this, is, this is how we can interpret them and analyze them. I hope uh, you got the understanding of uh, what payables turnover ratio is. And uh, for any comments or for any feedback, uh, please uh, mention it into the comments and please subscribe my channel if you really like the video. Uh, for online classes, uh, you can contact me at uh, this number and uh, the email address given below. Thank you.